Hello, seventh grade students. Let's start our session with a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your love and care. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us safe. I ask that you watch over each and every one of the students and their families. Thank you for all the sacrifices that they're making for each other, for their ability to show compassion to those in their families. Father, I ask that you please be with us during your math lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, and then let me make it a little bigger so y'all can see it better. Okay, today we're going to start talking about area of circles. We've spent some time on angles, pairs of angles, and triangles. Now we're going to look at area of circles. Also, I want to remind you what is area. When we think of area, we think of how much space does it take up. If you look at a tabletop, it takes up a certain amount of area. And a tabletop, I usually think of either a square or a rectangle. But you can have circular tables too. How much area does a, the top of a circular table take up? And then there's all kinds of practical applications of that. If you wanted to put a tablecloth on that circular table, how much material will you need? just for the top. There's something called a pad that you can put on a hard surface that will protect it. And then you would want to cut it out exactly to the size of the table top. You could think of circles, bicycle wheels, um, skateboard wheels, rollerblade wheels, all kinds of circle shapes. If you wanted to build a prototype of something, all kinds of ways that you would have practical application of why would you need to know the area of a circle. So as to the mathematical end of it, <clears throat> here is a circle right here. This shape right here. Okay. Show it on this paper so you'll see it more clearly. Here is a circle right here. And do you see how much area it's taking up on this blue sheet right here? Blue on blue. Looks kind of cool together, doesn't it? Well, what if I only need half the circle? Have you ever seen windows that are only half of a circle? That's actually called a semicircle. That's, that's people getting creative when they only have half a circle. What about if you only had a fourth of the circle? That's called a quarter circle. Okay, so those are the definitions you'll need to know as far as the different types of circles are concerned. Most of your time will be spent in calculating the area of a complete circle, but you might also need to know how to calculate a semicircle or a half circle. In other words, calculate the area, area, and divide by two. Or if you just needed a quarter, calculate the area and divide by four. Okay, now some terminology you may, you may already know. This R here, from the outside, from the center of the circle to the outside edge, that's the radius. From the outside edge to the opposite outside edge through the center is the D for diameter. Well, di one diameter is equal to two radius. That'll come into play when you're calculating the circle. One diameter equals two radius. Now, another bit of information, you're going to be using this uh, as part of your formula. It's called pi, and we're going to use an approximate form of pi, or it's going to be about. In other words, your answer is not going to be an exact answer, because we're going to use 3.14 for pi. And now let's speak to the formula itself. A, uppercase A, for area of a circle. That's the notation for the symbol circle. Area of a circle equals pi times r squared. 
I know y'all haven't used R squared or any kind of squared much this year. Maybe you have in the past. But if this is a problem, take it apart and say it like this. Area of a circle is pi times R times R. And I've included that within these steps here. Pause the video and write these steps down in your notes. You're writing these steps down. Okay, steps to find an area of a circle. First, write your formula, then plug in your numbers. Note, if you are given a diameter, you must divide by two to find the radius. Then plug the numbers into the formula. Then you will solve. This is how you will solve. Multiply your radius times your radius. Then multiply the answer by pi, represented by 3.14. So let's use these rules, okay? I've got the one, first one started already. Um, radius of three inches. Keep in mind, here's radius from the center to the outside edge. Here's the formula, and here's the formula broken out. And this is where I stop. 3.14, I substituted in, I'm on the second step. Plug in your numbers. Okay, so I'm plugging in the numbers. 3.14 times 3 times 3. And I was started with the radius, so I don't have to take care of this note step, which is good. Now then, third step, solve. Multiply your radius times radius, so 3 times 3 is 9. Now you're going to go to the calculator. Three point one four times nine is. Oops, I did the wrong thing. I did three point one four times three. Do y'all see my mistake? Let's try again. Three point one four times nine. Twenty eight point twenty six. 28.26, but I had said this is an estimate. So you write the approximation symbol or about and go back and pick up your labels. This is what I wrote over here concerning the labels. Answer units are squared. There's all kinds of examples of answer units are squared. Do we have inches? I'm going to write square inches. So the area of the circle with a radius of three inches is about 28.26 square inches. Now I want you to try it. Pause the video and try this. Five inches with a radius of five inches. Okay, now if you haven't already started the video back up, I hope that you have. And I hope you're seeing what I've written so far. Formula, formula broken out, in plugging in the data, plugging in the information there. Now we're going to solve. We're going to multiply our radiuses. Radius by radius is 25. So if I have a radius of 5 inches, I'm going to plug in 3.14 times 25, and I get about 78.5. Remember to square my label. This answer alone is no good. You've got to have the label in uh, square inches. Square inches. Again, think of that tabletop, that circular tabletop, and you want to put a, the pad on it, or you want to cover it for some reason. Now let's slide to looking at, this is probably all we'll have time for, it's just one example. But what happens if you have the diameter and not the radius? What happens if you have the diameter and not the radius? What do the rules say? You're still going to use the same formula. Look at the note right here. If you are given a diameter, you must divide by 2 to find the radius. So, in your head, think, oh, 
diameter is 30 feet. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So my radius is 15 feet. Now you're golden. Go back to 1, the first step there, and you write your formula. Pi r squared. Hey, I'm going to start skipping a step. You see how I broke it out? And I plugged in the values at the same time. Okay. Now you're going to multiply radius times radius. Depending on how well you know your squares, you may not have to go to the calculator. But if you need to, go to the calculator. 15 times 15 is 225. Then you go to the calculator and say 3.14 times. 225 is about... 706.5. Your label has to be squared, and we're talking about feet. Square feet. Well, if it's taking up that much room, that must be something bigger than a tabletop, right? Maybe a pool in the backyard, a circular pool in the backyard, or something even bigger. All kinds of applications. Well, that's all I have time for today. Note that we've shown, I've shown you how to calculate the area of a circle. And the answer is an approximation or about. You take care. Uh, God bless. Know that God loves you and he made you very special. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.